is time for our monthly book haul and That's right. we are talking about all the books that we acquired in January 2021 which is a substantial amount and I'm kind of freaked out but you know we'll make the best of it because books. We're gonna start by talking about all the books that we were sent or approved by publishers for. So I'm gonna kick things off by talking about the NetGalley stuff which is all the digital arcs that I received in January. The first is from Penguin Teen, and it is a book called What's Not to Love by Emily Wiberly and Austin Seedrin Broga, who are in real life actually a married couple, oh, which I think is very cute. And the one line description for this is an academic enemies to lovers YA with all the nerdy drama, high school antics, and heart pounding romance of the Netflix original series Never Have I Ever. It's the enemies to lovers thing for me. <laughs> and also I have really enjoyed all the other books that this author duo has put out. There's one that I still haven't read yet, which came out last year, but other than that, there other books have been such a delight and I am looking forward to checking this one out as Sweet. well. The next book is an adult contemporary romance by an author I have read quite a few books from. It is Lauren Lane and this is thanks to Gallery Books and the title of the book is To Sir With Love. The one line description for this one is Love is Blind meets You've Got Mail in this laugh out loud romantic comedy following two 30 somethings who meet on a blind dating app only to realize that their online chemistry is nothing compared to their offline rivalry. Whoa, I am, no. I have enjoyed every single Lauren Lane book that I've read. She just writes such great, fun, adult contemporary reads oh, that are dear. not too long either. So I am definitely looking forward to that one. There is that. The next book is also thanks to Penguin. I think the next bunch are actually thanks to Penguin as well. And it's a book called Luck of the Titanic by Stacey Lee. From the critically acclaimed author of The Downstairs Girl comes the richly imagined story of Valora and Jamie Luck, twin British Chinese acrobats traveling aboard the Titanic on its ill fated maiden voyage. Oh, God. I've enjoyed all of Stacey Lee's books as well. I think she's one of the few historical YA writers that I find like her stories to be really interesting, especially because she puts Asian characters at the forefront of them. Right, right. And when I was a kid, I had a particular fascination for the Titanic as well and like the tragedy of that. Oh, so this terrible. should be interesting. Hurt? That'll hurt, my God. I know it'll hurt, but you know, it'll hurt in the way that all Titanic <laughs> stories hurt. True. From Penguin as well, we have From Little Tokyo with Love, and it says, Celebrated author Sarah Kuhn reinvents the modern fairy tale in this intensely personal yet hilarious novel of a girl whose search for a storybook ending takes her to unexpected places in her, both her beloved LA neighborhood and her own garden heart. Oh. Ah, I love modern day fairy tales, Let's and I have see. not read anything by Sarah Kuhn yet, but that sounds delightful. Also from Penguin, and very exciting, is a new YA book from Gail Foreman. It's called We Are Inevitable. And this basically says it is a laugh till you cry comedy about life after extinction. I actually mostly requested this one because it's a Gail Foreman book and it's been a while since we've gotten a new book from her. So I'm eager to see what she has to offer us now as an author. A book that I'm super excited about that Berkeley is the one who approved me for is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. If that name sounds familiar to you, she actually wrote one of my favorite reads of 2020 called Beach Read. This is her new adult contemporary romance and it is basically about two best friends. They go on 10 summer trips and this is their last chance, this last trip for them to actually fall in love. And I'm just like, here for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. A sparkling new novel that will leave you with the warm, hazy afterglow usually reserved for the best vacations. So first of all, there's a vacation aspect to this, which I'm looking forward Sweet. to. And second of all, I have found that if done right, I do find the friends to lovers trope pretty interesting. So hopefully it will be done right. Agreed. The last NetGalley book is thanks to Sourcebooks Fire, and the book is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. So this is a debut contemporary fantasy standalone about heartbreaking power, the terror of our collapsing atmosphere, and the ways we unknowingly change our fate. It's actually a book that I really wanted to read because it's about witches, and specifically witches who pull on elemental seasonal powers, and that's always something that fascinates me, no matter what the rest of the story is about. So. Very much looking forward to checking that one out as well. Those are all the digital things I got from publishers, but we also have a whole host of physical things that we get to talk about today. The first is from Page Street Books. It is a sequel to a book that I really enjoyed last year. The book is Broken Web by Laurie M. Lee. This is the sequel to Forest of Souls, which you may recall I mentioned it last year in my review that it kind of reminded me of reading a Tamara Pierce story, like just right. the way it was set up and written. So this basically is the continuation of what happens in Forest of Souls where a young woman discovers that she has an unexpected magical power and that sort of changes the trajectory of her life plans. And this is the fallout of all the events that happened in the first book. Not gonna go much more into it because obviously spoilers, but I will leave a link to the thoughts I had on the first book 
down below for you to check out. Awesome. And then, thanks to the lovely folks at Wednesday Books, I have a finished copy of You Have a Match by Emma Lord, which I mentioned, I, I think I reviewed it already in yep. another video. It is about Abby, who after taking a sort of DNA test, discovers that she has a full-blooded sister that she knew mm, nothing about. Yep, you reviewed and this. so the two end up you know, deciding to meet in person because they don't live so far from each other and then they end up going to the same summer camp because they're determined to figure out what went down between their parents and why they never knew about each other. And it was such a delight. I will also link to the post where I review this down below. And then, thanks to Berkeley, we have a hefty amount of books. We're gonna start with The Heiress Gets a Duke by Harper St. George and this is the first in the Gilded Age Heiresses series. Even a fortune forged in railroads and steel can't buy entrance into the upper echelons of Victorian high society for that you need a marriage of convenience oh it's a marriage of convenience story i'm already here for it also i am kind of obsessed with the dress on the cover of this i'm book. kind of obsessed with the private joke about the dukes <laughs> the next book is called a lady's formula for love by elizabeth everett and this is the first i think in the secret scientist of london series Ooh, the it secret says, scientist of london. what is a victorian lady's formula for love mix one brilliant noblewoman and her enigmatic protection officer Add in a measure of danger and attraction, heat over the warmth of humor and friendship, and the result is more than simple chemistry. It's elemental. Okay, listen, whoever came up with the copy for All that, right. great that was job. Good. Great that job. That was good. You gotta give him that. And then I have Much Ado About You, which is by Samantha Young. This one came recommended by my friend Rachel from Hello Chelly. This says, The cozy comforts of an English village bookstore open up a world of new possibilities for Evie Starling in this charming new romantic comedy. Okay, listen, English countryside and a bookstore, sign me up, I'm there, I'm good. And the fact that Rachel enjoyed it means more than likely that I'm also gonna enjoy it as well. Yep. And the last book I got from Berkeley is one that I've actually read and talked about also, and I'll link all the relevant videos down below. It's a book called The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This is the one where they both work at a radio station and then they end up becoming co-hosts of a show called The X Talk where they're pretending to be exes and talking about their relationship and dissecting and giving some relationship advice only to finally realize that they might actually have feelings for each other. So it Here goes from go. fake dating to actual dating to, you know, the public fallout of when everybody finds out that they weren't actually exes in the first yeah, place. That's not cool. And it was so good. I'll leave it at that. Link to the video where I talked about it down below. This is from William Morrow, The Keepsake Sisters by Laurie Wilde. Apparently, this is another story where the main character discovers that she has a twin sister. This time it's a twin, an identical twin that she never knew about. And so it's kind of them exploring that relationship and also the hows and whys of why they didn't know about each other until they were into adulthood. And the last two, also from HarperCollins, are finished copies, which is pretty cool. So first we have While I Was Away by Waka T. Brown. I really like the cover of that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So basically, it's a middle grade novel, and in the story, it's actually, I think it's nonfiction, because it says when Waka's mother suspects her 12-year-old daughter can't understand basic Japanese, she makes the drastic decision to ship Waka to Tokyo to live with her strict grandmother and reconnect with the culture and master the language. So now she's trying to, you know, see if she can find her place as someone who is technically American, having been born in the States, but also of Japanese descent because of her family's bloodline. And I like those kinds of stories. I didn't realize it was a nonfiction novel, but that makes it all the more interesting. Cool. And last but not least, with the cutest cover ever, it's One Jar of Magic by Corianne Haydu. A stunning novel about the power of identity, the complicated bonds of family, and the wonders within the not-so-ordinary ordinary. I mean, I have always enjoyed Corianne Haydu's books. She tackles subjects that are familiar, but in unusual ways. And that is true of her middle grade as well. One of my all-time favorite middle grade novels is actually by her. It's called Rules for Stealing Stars. So I'm looking nice. forward to reading this one as well. That is the end of my publisher, Physical Hall. In which case, I will do a little encore yes. publisher piece because guess what we got in We got another copy. <laughs> Uh, not that we don't appreciate these things. I don't mind swimming in like piles of Chain of Gold books. <laughs> Those of you who don't know, Chain of Gold is set in the Shadowhunters universe written by Cassandra Clare, mm -hmm. a world where people get juiced up by the angels and have the therefore the juiced ability to fight off angels. demons and sort of police the world. That's what they do, which doesn't make them popular with those sort of half like demony, you know, denizens of the downworld, which are vampires, werewolves, and witches, and well, warlocks technically. And this is set sort of in the sort of like the Victorian-esque type of, you know, kind of situation in which is the second generation of a, of a previous series of Shadowhunters. Really fun. We did an entire podcast on just this book. Which will be linked down below. So that's one way to put this segment of the stuff we got from publishers to a close. Yeah, and there's also going to be an exclusive post that I did. We did a postcard art reveal 
and there was also a giveaway for it, so feel free to check that out as well. It will be down in the description box below. Alrighty, so it's time to segue a little bit and pivot to, to the next sort of section. So Kristen and Mary Lee Kristen has been you know, a good friend of the family for years, years now. Years now. She decided to, you know, throw some books our way. So I want to start with something that matters to me sort of the most because- I do want to read it though. Because this is one of my favorite books and I do not have a copy on Hardbound. And now I do. It's called Ready Player One by uh, Ernest, Ernest Klein. Klein. Ready Player One is a cult classic, I would like to say at this point in time. So. Also, sort of a legitimate sort of like blockbuster hit slash New York Times best-selling sort of book. It's a set in a world sort of post-dystopian type deal where everybody is just living in the oasis, which is a it's of course sort of a place the internet. It's like virtual reality sort of world. Within the oasis is a set of Easter eggs laid by the founder of. of the <laughs> I mean, I see what you did there. <laughs> I, I'll see myself out after this video. Easter eggs laid by the founder of the Oasis, by the creator of it, wherein if you solve the mysteries that these Easter eggs are shrouded in, you actually get controlling stock of the company that sort of owns basically the entire sort of world now. So of course, for decades even since this founder's death, companies have been in investing literally time and resource to cracking this, this code, right? Unbeknownst to everybody, young Wade Watts, our main character over at Ready Player One, is so much closer to cracking this mystery than mostly anybody else. And in the process of doing so, unleashes a revolution and it's beautiful. I have all of the pop vinyls of every single character. Really good movie. movie. Unpopular movie opinion, I'm sure. I love the movie because we're going to talk about that uh, some other time, but I, I don't think that the movie takes anything away from the story. I think the movie is a great way to interpret this book into I think so too. movie format without diminishing mm. the effect of it. Agreed. Contrary to popular. Like, you you can't expect the same experience from a movie as you can from a book. Agreed. There's just no As way. Well. So if you were going to get a Ready Player One movie experience, that the movie was exactly it. But if you want it in book form, it this is unbeatable as well. So thank you, Kristen, for this. <laughs> what else did she give us? Well... We actually didn't own a finished copy of this book yet, but now we do. And now it's do. the first book in the Arusha series. This yeah. is Arusha and the End of Time. This series is basically Percy Jackson meets Sailor Moon, and it also includes yeah. Hindu mythology. So I, I've It's only Percy Jackson's sarcasm meets Sailor Moon. Yeah. Mind you. I have read the first book and I really enjoyed it. I still have to continue on with the series because I'm quite behind, but I do fully have the intention of doing so. It's definitely one of the more fun middle grades. I'm pretty sure this was the first yeah. Rick Riordan uh, uh, Presents novel. Oh yeah, for sure. It's definitely like yeah. first And it's album. almost done. Can you believe that? We're almost at the point where the series is complete. So I definitely have to do some catching up. Same. Kristen also passed on You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria to me. This is a adult contemporary romance and it says leading ladies do not end up on tabloid covers leading ladies don't need a man to be happy leading ladies do not rebound with their new co-stars so basically it's a co-star romance between two people who are on a telenovela situation cool i am looking forward to reading this we'll see how i feel about it because i know it's gotten sort of mixed reviews from people i follow and last but not least i have a series ender kristen gave me a uk hardcover copy of the empire of gold by s.a chakraborty so i have read the first book in this series that is city of brass and this is the devabad trilogy so city of brass follows a character named Nari. She accidentally summons a djinn and ties him to her and ends sure. up getting taken to a city of djinn because apparently she has a whole bloodline history thing that she did not know about. And they also cross paths with a prince who lives in said city and shenanigans kind of ensue from there. I don't know much more about what happens in books two and three of the series because I haven't read them yet, but I do fully intend to read them before the end of the year. So thank you again, Kristen, for all the great books. Yay. And now we're gonna move along to some digital books that I picked up. I have more than I thought I would. <laughs> so the first book is part of the Uptown Girl series by Joanna Shoup. This is The Devil of Downtown, and it is the last book in this series. It's about a beautiful do-gooder who must decide if she can team up with one of New York's brashest criminals without losing something irreplaceable, her heart. The next book is one I have already read. I don't think the video where I talk about it will be up yet, but when it does, I will update the link below. This is Night Song by Beverly Jenkins. This is a romance between a young school teacher and a member of the cavalry, a sergeant named Chase Jefferson. It was a really cute romance and 
I enjoyed it a lot. The next book is a sequel, so I don't actually, can't say what it's about because I don't know, but I saw that I was gonna get a good deal on it, so I snapped it up. It's A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, which is the second book in the Blood and Ash series from Jennifer L. Armentrout. Don't know anything about it, but I have heard so many things Done. about the first book, and I'm very curious to see how I'm gonna feel about it. And the last book I'm gonna mention is The Darkest Night by Gina Showalter. This is the first book in the Lords of the Underworld series. I saw also saw that there was a great deal on this, so I ended up snapping it up. All her life, Ashlyn Darrow has been tormented by voices from the past. To end the nightmare, she has come to Budapest seeking help from men rumored to have supernatural abilities. Not knowing, she'll be swept into the arms of Maddox, their most dangerous member, a man trapped mm. in a hell of his own. Neither can resist the instant hunger that calms their torments and ignites an irresistible passion, but every heated touch and burning kiss will edge them closer to destruction and a soul-shattering test of love. So this is the start of a pretty long urban fantasy paranormal romance series. You might be able to guess why I'm reading this one, but you'll have to wait till October to see the end results of it. <laughs> And now Mackie can tell you about his digital haul. Yeah, well. we're gonna start with a couple of Ransom Riggs books, oh, right? Nice. Because they sort of, ha I also got a good deal on them. Map of Days and A Conference of Birds, books four and five of the Miss Peregrine's ah, the Home for hmm. Peculiar Children. Pecu Right? Yes, I think I call it up. It's Miss Peregrine's, you know, uh, you know, peculiar, peculiar children. Very cool. Very, you know, kids with abilities that are sort of semi grotesque, semi cool, semi not cool. It's got that <laughs> carnival, old timey sort of like freak that. show, but not, but kind of, kind of like deal. So I liked it. Loved, loved the first trilogy. It did not end definitively. Okay. And so it only makes sense that there are sort of more books because the journey is It's almost is actually absolutely done now, right? Yeah, I, I would like to think this is a six-part like, thing. So. But it does have that, you know, when book three sort of ended, it, it did open up the world a little bit more. Mm. So there is... So, there was so you like could a, have stopped at three. But it could also have more. But now there's like sort of like so much more. So, so that was So that was always sort of cool. And it's about a young guy who just realizes that I do have a sort of like, you know, I, I have connections to this place. But what exactly that connection is, we're going to find out. So since this is book four and five... I, there's very little I can say that won't spoil spoil anybody. I also got the left-handed booksellers of London. Garth Nix. By Garth Nix. Anything Garth Nix really these days is just like Garth Nix is one of our favorite authors. Pretty much, well, my specifically of, Mackie. My favorite authors of all time, just because uh, Sabriel. If you haven't seen it, go grab it. It's about a kid who is, you know, his family is one of the booksellers in London and catastrophic stuff happens and then he's there's like a magical aspect to it yeah and it's up to him to sort of like I mean it's a bunch of booksellers right I mean it's the cutest thing ever I'm gonna skip this part of my digital haul this sort of ends it because and sort of move on into not only did we get it on digital we got it in physical too. Oh, that's true. In which case, I'm gonna start with the last two books that I already had on digital anyway, but Alexa was able to grab in physical format as well. The Tyrant's Tomb and The Tower of Nero, books four and five of The Trials Finally, of Apollo. Finally, we got a good deal on them too. We got a great deal on them. There is a there is a gap in our reordered shelf that is just for these two yeah. Lester books. I say Lester because the premise and the setting of, this, of, the, Trials of, 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 of the Trials of Apollo happens right after the events of uh, Percy Jackson and the Heroes of Olympus series, which is several years into sort of like the Percy Jackson sort of storyline, mm. but does not center on Percy. It centers on the disgraced god Apollo, who in true Apollo fashion gets sort of chucked out of Olympus and is now cursed to live the life of a mortal until he's able to redeem himself. Mm -hmm. And in this century, his name as a mortal just happens to be Lester Papadopoulos. Uh, shenanigans ensue. It's been a while since we've said that. It's probably the first time we've said it in 2021. Perfect time to bring it out because that's exactly what happens here. I will say this about the series if you ever want to pick it up. Just when you thought that Uncle Rick could not pull Rick, the rug, could not pull the rug out from, from out from under you. under you, you might be wrong about that. So there's right. and and it, and it happens right during the Trials of Apollo book one, and and that is something that you absolutely need to do. So have have, have had these on digital, and now we have them physical. And, and speaking of which, and this is a great way to sort of transition to Alexis, and also wrap wraps up my last sort of like digital stuff would be so Christine Kishore came out with a series called Graceling, mm -hmm. set in sort of like a fantasy like world where you know, people have graces. Uh, uh, different graces, like a special, you know, other enhanced, you know, enhanced and otherworldly enhanced abilities that sort of manifest in sort of like the color of their eyes being sort of like, you know, it's it's, hetero, it's a heterochromia Heterochrom heaven, basically. And so she came up with, with a book named Graceling and she came up with, uh, with a prequel named Fire. And then the third book, Bitter Blue. I had Bitter Blue on, on, on digital and, you know, right there, right? And so all three books are now also in physical format in these super awesome new covers 
Why, you would say? Because a fourth book in the, in the universe was just, was just released. Called Winter Keep. Called Winter Keep. And we're grabbing that. Yes, we are definitely grabbing that. But I obviously am a sucker for pretty covers. These are stunning the way they chose to design them. And I'm so pleased that I finally was able to get them when I went out with my friend Rachel. You bet The one Rooney. time we hung out in January. In which case, that is a segue to now all of the <laughs> physical books that we actually did get. So on my outing with Rachel, I also got a couple of other books. I may have kind of gotten a little bit spend happy just because I hadn't gone book shopping in a bookstore for a while. So one of the books I picked up was World of Wonders in Praise of Fireflies, Whale Sharks, and Other Astonishments by Amy, I'm gonna butcher this last name because it's a very long name, Nezukumatathil. It's a very long last name. Sure. Rachel and I actually caved because we, at first we were like, oh, it's just a pretty book. And we both kind of wanted to read it. And then we held back. But then we saw that the author's mom is Filipino. And like Rachel and I instantly were like, nope, we're gonna buy that book. So go. this is basically a series of illustrated essays that looks at sort of the natural world through this author's eyes and I think that sounds incredible plus I'm so excited to read it just because of the other aspects and look how cute the illustrations that was gorgeous so that was the other thing I got at Barnes and Noble and then I went to Books of Wonder with Rachel the new location for it I got two books while I was there so the first one is just one where I upgraded my paperback into the hardcover so it matches the rest of my series the book in question is Sinner by Maggie Stiefvater this is the it's sort of a sequel to the first, the trilogy, The Wolves of Mercy Falls, but it's also kind of like a standalone spin-off. And this centers around one of the secondary characters in that series named Cole and his relationship with another character in the series named Isabel. And it is actually one of, it is probably my favorite of the four books in that series. So definitely Sweet. needed to grab that. And I finally have a physical copy of House Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones, which I do really want to read. I do love the Studio Ghibli movie, but I do know that it is pretty different from what the actual novel pretty is. <laughs> so I would like to experience the novel for myself, just like I would like to read the Kiki's Delivery Service yeah. novel and see how that goes yeah, as yeah, well. Totally. So maybe I'll just read them both at the same time and see I know, how have that... a Ghibli double feature. Yeah, have a you know, Ghibli double feature. Double feature. <laughs> Sounds like a fun time to me. <laughs> uh, and the last couple of things are going to be related to pre-order. So this came a bit late, but I'm still happy to have it. And it's all of the pre-order goodies that came from pre-ordering Unlocked by Shannon Messenger. So you have this is exclusive Iggy character art. Iggy! You have a signed book plate, which is going to go straight into that book. And you have a copy of the map, the which is actually map. on the hardcover of the book as well. Yeah, the so. end papers are the map, yeah. I think. And then two pre-orders. One is... Physical copy! Or by Alexander Bracken. This is the Barnes & Noble edition, so it's a little bit shinier when it comes to Hell the title. Yeah. Uh, you have seen us talk about Lore before, but it is about Melora, Lore for short, and she has basically decided that she no longer wants to take part in this world that her family was involved in, where they're one of the families that competes in a tournament called the Aegon. Called the Aegon. There are a couple of gods that were disgraced, and so every seven years they're forced to take human form participate in this tournament as sort of the prey <laughs> and try not to die because if they die whoever manages to kill them is going to get their powers their abilities so on and so forth Laura finds herself dragged back into this world when an unexpected childhood friend who she thought was dead and a goddess show up at her doorstep and sort of recruit her to help them out and it just things gets crazy ensue. from there on in. it's a great book it's a standalone as well so if you want one sitting read you got it's it it's great it's a black hole i loved it pulled me right in <laughs> spat me out it's great speaking of things that pulled me right in and also spat me right back out and have left me emotionally distraught ever since i finished it that's a thing this is a finished copy of the mask falling by samantha shannon this is the fourth book in the bone season series it decimated me when i read it i will include links to anything related to this book that is relevant the mask falling takes on the journey of Paige mahoney who is the character we have followed for three books this yeah. is the fourth book and this is set in a world where clairvoyants are a thing so people with psychic powers they are you know looked down upon by the government of scion which is trying to control clairvoyance and the world as it is and it turns out there might uh, actually be people pulling the strings behind the scenes that we don't know about until you read the first book and this book Paige has gone through a lot already and let's just say this book just 
digs that knife a little deeper <laughs> for Paige. It is also set in Paris though, which is a refreshing thing considering the rest of the books were mostly set in the UK. So yeah, great installment in the series. Would highly recommend checking out the series if you haven't already. And that brings us to the end of our book haul for the month of January. Just like that. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed watching us haul all our books. And if you got any of these books as well, let us know. If you're interested in seeing us talk about some of the ones we haven't read yet, also let us know and let us know what your favorite book purchase i guess of the month of january was and we will see you guys with a new video soon bye, bye.